Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us from. My name is Frank Gartland. I work with this great company, Skillable. And we are pretty excited to uh, to kick off our, our launch event here in the spring. Um, you know, I know that there's a, a lot of people joining us as we go. And so um, we've got a lot to share, not just in the next hour, but throughout the day. So, um, so I'm pretty fired up, pretty excited. It is 8.31 here in, in, in Arizona, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, you know, again, my name's Frank. I'm uh, the EVP of product here at Skillable. And uh, last week, I celebrated my one-year anniversary with this great company. And um, some of the most exciting things for me in the last year have been, one, getting to know the great team we have. Like, um, I think all of you know what a, what a great group of, of sales folks, developers, support teams, like everybody that, that, you, you, that you get to know, believe me, are, are just as cool uh, in person. But the other thing is this, this, this thing where I believe that if you're part of the, the learning industry, the training industry that really has evolved into the skilling industry, right? I think that it's a pretty exciting time. You know, as I as I kind of look at this picture, you know, it's this notion of, man, I'd love to have a friend, you know, a partner, someone I can kind of walk up the hill and see what's over the, the ridge there. I bet it's a glorious view. And I think that, you know, here at Skillable, like as, as team members, we think about this together, like with the innovations we're doing. We think about it um, also in terms of the way that we're, we're hopefully walking with you and you're walking with us. So what I'd like to do is we kick off the, this great day, this launch event. I'd like to just share with you a little bit about what your options are today. Um, so this is the agenda. You know, the, there's the you are here. We are in the keynote this morning. So thank you for uh, for making it. Um, over the next couple of hours, you've got a bunch of options. So you'll notice there's kind of a you know, developer, logistics folks, uh, stakeholders some sessions that might be good for you to check out. So um, these 10 tips in 60 minutes with Paul, and then again with Bev, these are gonna be really cool sessions if you're if you're a lab builder, if you're a lab developer, if you kinda wanna know some really cool tips and tricks on how to build higher quality labs faster, I think those will be great. I think additionally, this not notion of notifications that Bev's gonna cover, if you're, if you're one of those, like an LMS administrator, if you're using our TMS, uh, these are gonna be great. Um, same thing with catalogs, um, this score, if you're into scoring, like we believe that every hands-on experience should be validated, should be scored. My buddy Tracy, he's our Challenge Labs architect, he is going to walk through some really cool ways uh, to score and make sure that your, your learners are getting some confidence as they're, as they're going. We just launched, you may have seen this, I'll talk about it some, Skillable Connect. Um, it's a new way that uh, we're packaging our APIs, and I think that if you're if you're interested in our APIs, if you're using them, if you'd like to maybe do more with them, this is going to be an incredible session with Eric Grau. Um, Eric used to be a customer, and he, he started with us a, a few months ago, and knows a ton about our platforms, and is is already kind of relaunched this platform. And then my good friend Omid Ferdosi and I are going to talk about validated skills development right after this one. Um, the uh, and then after that, you've got Katie and Bill talking about the skills validation framework. Just a lot of things going on. All of them will be recorded. So if you're like, hey, I really want to watch three of these, like you can get them later. But I would love it if you joined us live and helped and, and uh, asked some questions and kind of hung out with us for a little bit. So um, let's dive right in to what I want to share with you over the next hour. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm very excited about what we're doing here at Skillable. And I think that, you know, a lot of you are still thinking, well, it's learn on demand systems. It's LODS, right? Well, you know, oh yeah, they're Skillable now. And you're trying to remember that, that name. Um, I, for one, am thrilled that we, that with this new name, not just because I don't have to type frank.gartlow at learnondemandsystems.com anymore, which is, which is a hassle, right? But the name has so much to do with our purpose, and I, and I hope it's an aligning purpose, like with all of you, our, our partners and our customers. And, and the way I like to think about it is this word is, is all about you know, skills, and it's enabling people. Like skills really are so, the great enabler. It's the great differentiator. It's like people are, are designed to contribute to things, to contribute to society, to their community, to their family, right? And skills, that's, that's kind of the currency that allows them to grow those competencies that allow them to better contribute, right? And of course, the heart of what we do is labs. And we, we believe, that, believe that not only do labs provide a safe place, 
But people learn faster and they learn more completely where they own the skill if they're learning while doing it. They have a safe place to go and figure it out and fail forward. And then finally, in the end, right, skilling and, and, and hands-on learning enables people to have new abilities. And abilities are created not just when people, you know, listen to a skill and think about a skill and kind of get the skill, right? But it's when they actually have the confidence to use them, like in context. This is a spot where, where, where I just love this name. It's where skills and labs and abilities come together to create skillable. And, and really, if you put it all together, it's about validated skills development. Like this is the this is why we're so happy with the name. That's why I hope that that you're learning to use the name and LODS is fading away as skillable, you know, kind of rises to the front of your mind. But validated skills development is really the core of what we're trying to help you to achieve. Now, now again, I just want to emphasize kind of a purpose thing, right? When it comes to purpose, I think I think a big part of this is, let me do one thing real quick. I'm gonna, I think I need to turn on, I thought my notifications were off, but I'm still hearing the beep. I hope you're not hearing it. But uh, what I'd like to do is, is, is move into some some things about purpose, just for a minute. And it's this notion of, of, of what this session is about. The purpose of this session is I wanna talk with you about how we're, we've shifted into a kind of a new season. And our focus right now for the next for the next year is, is really enabling you to deliver higher quality labs, higher quality hands-on learning experiences faster. Like that's a huge focus for us, right? Um, and so, so as we dive into that, these are the three big topics that I'm gonna be talking about today. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about our lab experience, our lab delivery and our data and reporting. The ways we're even structuring our product teams, you know, internally are aligned to these three big principles, right? We have we have multiple product teams in each of these areas that, that have product owners and, and managers, and we're coaching our teams how to think this way. And so, so the idea behind lab experiences is all about that high quality lab. Like building not just a lab that, that, that people can click through and go, well, I'm done, but I don't exactly know what I just did. Like, I'm not sure, like, when would I ever do that? Like, like for us, it's great to have the lab, but, but making it a high quality lab is such an opportunity for us, right? But then doing those faster so you can get them to market uh, more quickly. Uh, we're going to encourage you to explore ways to do this. Like validated skills development, that validated part is where for us, high quality kind of starts and stops. Now, in terms of lab delivery, this is about getting a launch lab button in front of your your students, right? In the right in the right place, the right time, the right way, um, the right context. Whether it's a, a learner or whether it's an exam taker, you know, whatever it happens to be, like how are we enabling you to get labs to to the right folks, at the right time, the right way? Um, and then it's about okay, once they're done, where's all that great rich lab data go? Like how do you get that back into your system? And of course, that goes goes right into data and reporting. You know, we are committed this year to doing a much better job of providing data in better ways. Now, just in, in the next hour when I'm talking with Omid, Omid's going to tell you like some ways they're already using our APIs oh. to produce some incredibly cool data driven things. But we're going to talk about some things that we're going to do to make that even easier and how that you, that you can leverage data a little bit better. So this is what you're, you're kind of in store for. And, and I think, I don't know, I hope, uh, I know a lot of you are probably multitasking, you're probably in email right now, but I'm hoping that I can pull you into this conversation um, um, just really well as we go. So so moving back to it, let's talk about like walking up this hill together. Like let's talk about our product roadmap and the season of innovation that we have been enjoying. Um, I think the, the first thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of even go backwards. So before we look forward, let's turn around and look what where we came from just here in the last uh, the last four months or so. Um, you know, what we've recently released, I mean, you guys are busy people. Like, I, you know, some of these, all this has been announced, but but it's hard to stay on top of it. But first of all, start even, even in Q4 of last year, but the last four to six months has been an incredible investment in just the performance of labs, the reliability of labs, and the scalability of these hands-on experiences, like from, a, from $4 million of investments into our data centers to, to tons of improvements with our Azure fabric and our AWS fabric. You know, these are the, the cloud slices that enable folks to 
connect directly get their learners connected directly to cloud environments like like lots of investment on kind of those things that just make sure that these labs work every time and, and, are, and, are, and are great. We made good advancements there. We continue to invest there. But the next thing that, that we did, like, like my belief is that if we're going to be a trusted partner, the only way that works is that we're talking, that we're collaborating together. And for, for you to be able to talk with us well, well, you've got to have some sort of an idea of, well, what are you, what are you focused on, guys? Like, how can, how can I help? And so the best way to do that is to share your public roadmap and, and to give an easy method for people to, to contribute, right? And then once those connections start happening, then we can start talking. I've had the, the pleasure of talking with about 15 customers uh, in the last week and a half or two weeks. And oh my gosh, it's like lifeblood for me. Like it's just, it's so exciting to listen to all the cool things that you guys are doing and thinking about that we haven't thought about yet. And so ways that we can improve our, our system, and that's really where Scalable Connect comes in. So today's session, by the way, is gonna be very demo heavy. So if you're a demo loving person, that's good. If you're not, well, hopefully you'll learn to be, because this is what we're gonna do today. Um, I'm gonna talk real, real quick about, about the public roadmap, the feedback portal and, and Scalable Connect, and then we'll come right back. So let's, let's go ahead and alt tab over to, here we go. First of all, our public roadmap. If you weren't aware, a couple of weeks ago, we had a press release that talked about this. So if you go to skillable.com WAC roadmap right now in your browser and you bookmark that, you can come back to this thing every couple of weeks. And our product management team uses a, a platform we call AHA. Well, we don't call it AHA. That's the name of the, the platform. <laughs> and AHA is, is, is really what drives our roadmap and drives our priorities. It's where our product owners put all of our requirements and, and, and the, the reasons we're doing things, right? Well, the front face to that is right here. So this is exactly what's going on. I'm going to show you this container fabric we are launching tonight, right? I'm going to show you Lab Advisor. I'm going to talk about GCP. I'm going to talk about Instruct. These are things that are happening that are in development. These are going on. Pretty soon you'll start seeing new features coming up where you can see, hey, we're completing the requirements for this. You know, these things are, this is in UAT already. So all these things are in development. That doesn't show right now, but it will, right? We're getting better and better and better. So I'd like you to, you know, once a month, every couple of weeks, come check it out and see, see what we're doing. Now, what's most important, I think, is as you see these things, you're going to say, well, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what about me? Like, what about, what about my idea? I've got an idea. The best way to share your idea is right here, the feedback portal. So go to feedback.skillable.com. Tell your lab developers to bookmark this page. This is something that we launched um, a year and a half ago, I think, well, before I was here. And, and I will tell you until November or so of, of last year, as I've said before, this is um, this was a place where great ideas went to die before. And I will readily admit that to you apologetically. OK, starting January, though. We have a completely new process for this. We have one of our product managers, Eric Grau, who's leading that 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 API session uh, later today. Eric Grau takes a look at this thing at least twice a week, sometimes three times a week. He's constantly engaging with the customers and our internal folks who are submitting ideas. This is where our internal people submit too, right? And clarifying, well, what do you mean by this? Would this work? Would this work? And then once a week, our entire product team reviews this and that we score these things. We, we, we clarify them more and it is already in a big way adjusting our our platform. So go in and vote, go in and click add a new idea. It's a pretty simple form. Just so submit it and, and someone will get with it. You'll see traction on this. And what's cool is that if you do this, once we add it to the roadmap, once we start development, you will get updated. Like you will know that these things are happening because we want to be transparent with you. Now, let's talk for a minute about, about Skillable Connect. I'm going to go back to my deck just for a minute. So Skill will connect. What, what happens here is, is we we have a set of it. We have a, a very a very robust set of APIs, and I think most of you are are using our APIs in some way, shape, or form. Here's what I would say about our APIs before a couple of weeks ago. Right? They were they were a little hard to understand. Like which API should I use for what purpose? The, the organization was hard to kind of get, and then some of the examples and things were a little inconsistent. Right? And, and what we've done is, is we basically re-documented and republished our APIs using the OPAI, or sorry, Open API initiatives you see there. 
and we put it into connect.skillable.com. So let me show you what this is like now today. And those of you that have not seen our APIs in the past, this might this might not land on you as well as it could, but this is better, let me assure you. So this is it, connect.skillable.com. This is the LOD edition. There's also our TMS edition over here, or just this URL and this whack TMS is how that would that would go. And basically notice, first of all, there's some organization over here where I can say anything about lab instance management or lab profile. What about events or organizations, right? And when you drill into any of these things, like user management, you get, okay, I've got a couple of get options. If I go into lab management, I have a, a post over here. It's great. I also got some, but they're prioritized by how you're probably going to want to use them. They're sort of grouped together in a super logical way. Whenever you click one of these things, you get not just like some responses and some samples, but, but in a week or two, you're also going to get a little thing called try it. And as long as you have an API key from us, you will be able to self-serve test these APIs with your systems. Like this is a, a dramatic improvement in, in just basically in empowering our partners and our customers to just to better leverage our APIs in, in a more simple, simplistic and, and robust way. So we're, we're pretty fired up about Adobe Connect. Um, again, if you have suggestions for more things or hey, I would love an API that could do this. You know, the feedback portal is a great place to kind of flesh that idea out. Uh, for sure, one of the things we're, we're considering is um, not just that that self serve testing option, but we're going to redocument the way LTI works. We're going to redocument um, uh, uh, some of the ways that our performance based testing, you know, with high stakes validation kind of works. And we're even thinking about later down the road, you know, doing some some different sorts of reporting APIs that we're pretty excited about. So if any of those things are interesting for you, you know, voting on those in the feedback portal would be would be awesome. So moving right along, I'm going to kind of glance really quick at the chat. Um, good stuff. It looks like there's is there a similar roadmap for lab titles that are releasing. Regina, great question. We do actually have a challenge labs roadmap. So as a lot of you know, we um, we have our, we, we eat our own dog food. So so Tracy Wallace and, and Ashley Neese, and they have a team of folks that we use our platform to build challenge labs. And there is a, a, a challenge labs roadmap. We are working on the usability for it. It's there. It's a little bit hard to, to read, in my opinion. But somebody, if so, if Jenny or James or somebody could just paste a link to that challenge labs roadmap, that would be great. Um, thank you for that question. So moving right along, um, I mentioned LTI. Just a quick thing. Um, the company that publishes the the organization really that publishes LTI is called Linus Global. Actually, they just renamed themselves, and I can't remember the name right now. Somebody will put it in chat, I'm sure. But they just announced a few weeks ago that they are deprecating LTI 1.1. It's a it's an old standard. It's not very secure. It's not a great option. You know, 1.3 is way better for a, for many reasons, but but some platforms don't support anything but 1.1. So some of you are sort of stuck using that. But I think that that this could be a good time over the next six months or so to kind of revisit LTA 1.1 because now that it's deprecated, I am certain that platforms around the the the, the world are going to start. You know, hey, if we only support 1.1, they're going to have to support something different, whether it's LTI 1.3 or Advantage. But you've always got our APIs that can work in certain circumstances. So a great time to just you know maybe schedule a conversation uh, with with your account manager and one of our solution engineers to help you think through your plans. Uh, for LTI 1.1. I will say this, don't worry about it. Like it deprecates as of June 30th, like just like a month from now, right? But we're gonna continue to fully support it. There's nothing that you need to worry about in, in, urgently at all. Like you, everything will work just business as usual with LTI 1.1, but I do think it's smart to kind of to kind of think about this summer and this fall, like what what should you, what should we do together to kind of to kind of address this? Okay, moving right along. Let's now go to some forward thinking. Those are all things that have already happened. Okay, so if you didn't know it, surprise, it happened. Right? Let's do some road mapping though, and let's talk about what's coming because I'm pretty fired up about some of the stuff we have coming. I think I think number one is our May release. It's production on May 26, which by the way is today, right? Um, I'm very fired up about this. Our May release is um, the big thing. There's a few things packaged in it. You can read in the release notes, right? 
But the big thing is our container fabric. We've had a container fabric. As you probably know, we've got VMware, we've got Hyper-V, we've got Azure, our Cloud Slice, and we've got AWS Cloud Slice. We also have a container fabric. And it is incredibly powerful, incredibly flexible, but it's also one that isn't used very much because I think people haven't, haven't played with it much. Um, I can tell you, if you ever talk to Tracy Wallace, who is our Challenge Labs architect, he literally can hardly sit in his chair when he talks about the container fabric. He is so overwhelmed and excited about it. What's exciting about this release is that we're solving a completely big set of new problems. I think, you know, the, the first thing we're doing is, is there's so many applications in the world today that run in a container whether it's a web app, whether it's a web app, whatever it is, so many applications could run fully in a container or in multiple containers, right? So the thing is, is it is it folks have these applications, but now those applications you kind of just use with Hyper-V or VMware, you just run, use a VM. And the problem with that is one, it's, it, it, it's two or three or four or five or 10, depending on the lab, like minutes of load time for your end user. Like that's a bit of a bummer. But the next thing is, is, is then the students can be distracted because they can just minimize your application. They should be learning and just go do stuff in Windows, right? Or, or, or in Linux, right? There's some distraction possibility. But then there's also just a lot of other things like, like building life cycle actions and automations and doing scoring like is a little trickier, right? And there are certain scenarios, especially with developer and data stuff, like data science, things like that, you really can't even do, right, today. Well, these problems sort of go away. And the idea is, if your application runs in a container, you know, get with our solution engineers like Paul Gregory, Corey Gibson, Joel Nix, the, the, these, these folks that, that, that you talk to all the time. They'll help you verify whether the APIs in that app are going to be appropriate for automating or not. And then within a few weeks, sometimes even a few days, within a few weeks, there's going to be a, you'll be able to have your own fabric for this application, right? Now, it's not 100%. It's not every single application in the world isn't going to work. But there's dramatically more use cases now with this new container fabric. And um, what I want to do, let me show this to you real quick. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Where am I? That was not a very good setup. Sorry, everybody. There we go. I am right now in a challenge lab. And this one is about Jupyter Notebooks. And, and Jupyter is a very, very commonly used data science tool. And this is one that, that I just loaded up before the before this before we started, and it's got a few LCAs. So notice, first of all, there's no no VM here. This is a container. This took, by the way, like six seconds to load, like not five minutes. It took like six seconds. It's incredibly fast, right? And there are some LCAs that our lab team built that put a lot of these these steps already in here, right? Um, and so you know, if I'm in the lab and I'm kind of just like, okay, I, I get that I'm a data science and I'm trying to add you know, some some things that might some some visualizations. Well, some of the, the, the LCs have done some work for me. You know, some parts of this that I, you're not really trying to, to to teach the student. So, you know, you kind of play this one and, and it gives you a little bit of a result. Okay, that worked. And then you've got, you know, the next step and you can kind of click play as you're kind of That's reading your instructions well, yeah. and learning. And okay, there's a visualization. And then here's maybe the work that I was supposed to do. Perfect. Right. A long weekend of camping with family and friends. And then I can go ahead and click verify, right? And and again, we, there's a scoring script now. It was a much easier to write scoring script because of this new container that now verified that this has been done. So the notion of, of not just creating like specific learning environments for your applications, building automations to get the student to exactly the spot you want them in, and then finally, scoring those labs so that student gets confidence that, yep, I did it right. I own that skill now, right? These are things that are dramatically improved with this new container fabric. We, we are super excited about it. If you've not played with our container fabric yet, I would encourage you to encourage your lab developers to give it a peek. Um, talk with your account management team, your sales engineering team about how we can help. But I think that, that, that basically to put it in a, in a nutshell, is is just dramatically more applications that you can now use the our lab platform to automate and i think if you're looking for developer and data oriented use cases you hopefully have a smile on your face because i think that the, there's a lot more options and the big the other big advantage is is just they're so much faster so i'm, I'm super excited about this i hope you are too okay moving right along what's next so this is coming out now like you'll be able to play with this you know tomorrow over the weekend right um 
Oh, uh, by the way, if you're someone that, hey, we we use Jupiter or we use Grafana, like these are two things that we're already have working. So these are things that, that you can even get to work quicker on because we've, we've got these things kind of in the hopper for you already as of as of the release. Um, OK. What's next? Next step is Google. If you've been with us for a little bit. A couple years, even you'll know that my good buddy Corey, which by the way, Corey sends his apologies. He is super not feeling well and he could not make it. He is bummed. He loves this maybe more than any other thing, like talking to you, to you folks, but um, he sends his regards. So uh, um, if you have him on, on LinkedIn, like send him a little, a little thank you note, a little, a little something, a little get, get well soon, Corey, like that would be fun. But we've talked about Google Cloud for a long time and the deal is as scalable, right? We've got such a strong connection with Azure and such a strong cloud slice with AWS, and we're constantly refining those. It's just been a matter of time of like, you know, we need to figure out like when can we when can we add Google to our mix? Well, it is being added. We it is in development. It's not just we're talking about putting it in development. It is in development. It's in its its second or third sprint right now. Uh, the team is focused. It is going well. They are excited. Um, we actually are planning to launch the first series of Challenge Labs in late June, maybe July, but hopefully late June. It's going to be mapped to that certification. And this summer, if you need to be building GCP labs, this is this is this is this is great news. We're super excited about this. Um, by the way, if you're still doing a lot of work with VMs, and a lot of times that's necessary for your lab, you want a VM and the VM launches the cloud, you know, reminder to just, you know, you can still explore just using our cloud slice native, like without the VM, like it saves a lot of a, a lot of resources in certain situations, just to remind folks to, to, to tinker with that. Um, so we're, I mean, over the moon that this is actually in development and in schedule. So we're excited about this. Again, hope you are too. I think um, this next thing is is interesting. So you think about all this new stuff, like there's Google Cloud, there's new container fabric, like there's you know ways that you maybe haven't really leveraged our Azure or AWS cloud slices as well as maybe you could. Well, sometimes it's like, well, we don't have, you know, we're busy, we don't have enough time. Well, this is where sometimes our, our, we're finding more and more customers are starting to leverage our services team and our services team is, is doing some incredible things. So if you weren't aware that we even had a services team, ta-da, we do, um, building labs, like all kinds of labs, whether it's you want them to just build labs with your ID team, or whether you want them to just do certain parts of it, like environment building and LCAs, like that's a whole skill and it's hard, right? Writing activities and scoring scripts, that's different, right? That's a whole different skill, right? Um, so those are things that we can do for you in addition to just building e-learning courses, you know, building sales enablement content. We do great project management. So if you're in the need for, for some help with certain things, we would love to talk to you about that. And, and additionally, the team under Katie Jose is, is doing some other new things that are standardized services that will enable us to, to do things at a, at a better price and get them done faster. So assessment writing services, you know, business outcome, this hands-on first transformation that we're pretty excited about. We believe that that sometimes there's certain skills that if you take a hands-on first approach, and Corey's talked about this for a long, long time, is that if you get someone into a lab and let them do a lab and it's kind of assess their skills and then add content, you know, supporting the lab process, right? That it can be less expensive, easier to update. And so I think but there's a way that you gotta think about that. It's kind of a mindset shift. So our, our team is, is developed, uh, they've actually done this with two different customers with phenomenal, phenomenal success. And the other thing I'd like to say is about the services team is they are really, when I say that, that a lot of folks don't even know we have it, they are being noticed. They just received last week um, an award from the training industry. They, they, they made the watch list this year, which I gotta tell you, they're such fun people. It was so cool to see their reaction of being recognized this way. So we are super proud of them. And if you use them or not, if you have a need or not, like like just, you know, we put that on LinkedIn. If you go out there and just give them your your good wishes, they would love to hear it. This is part of our, our little skillable community. Um, we're, we're super proud of them and, and we're, we're happy with with that. All right, so moving right along. This is probably my favorite part. So 
a couple of you have seen some of this because I sneak peeked this to a few customers over the last week and a half. But this is something that, again, as you look at this picture, like, oh, my gosh, I wish I could just run. And, and this looks like a play. And I don't like running, actually. But this looks like a thing I, I would run for at least, I don't know, like, I don't know, a few feet, 20, 200 feet, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I would jump. But but. This exclusive sneak peek is something where I want to introduce to you a new concept, and it's called Skillable Studio. Building high-quality labs is complicated. You, you, you need subject matter expertise. You need people that are very good at writing lab instructions. You know, if, you, if the instruction is too specific, it's not really learning. It's just following directions, right? If, it, if it's not specific enough, it's too vague. So someone doesn't know what to do, right? So, so the, the creating the environments and keeping up with the environments, the writing of the lab instructions, like there's a lot going on. And when, when you go into our LOD platform, right, um, there's a lot to learn, right? And we, we do make it easy. There's a lot of things built in there. There's so much power in LOD, but sometimes it's kind of hard to find, right? Sometimes you kind of need a coach. Well, Scalable Studio is, de is, is designed to take our LOD experience and transform it into something that's a little bit a little bit just different a little bit cooler like if you go into a movie studio and you're and they're building a movie like it's awesome right and, and when you when you go into a really a, 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 a master artist studio right it's like okay this guy knows what he's doing like this is set up and that's what we're building in skillable studio and and I'm, i just can't wait to show you guys some of the stuff so let me go ahead and i'm gonna i'm gonna do a quick demo of a few things we're building in Skillable Studio. Now, again, these things that I'm showing you, these are actually in development. This is not stuff that we're talking about. Oh, this will come out a you know a year and a half from now. Uh-uh. These things are in development right now. So right here, when you log into Skillable Studio, you remember the dashboard. This is kind of the new dashboard that you're going to see this summer, where you've got your lab profiles here, all of your favorites. You can edit them right here if you like. Tells you kind of what stage they're in, what, what fabrics they're using. You can create a new one. You can just hit search and search for a lab profile. Here's your lab instances of what's currently active, as well as your history. You can launch from there. You can search. And then there's this, this other two things, these two little widgets. One is, hey, as a lab developer, what is my contribution to my company been? How many labs have I published? And, and that's actually a typo. <laughs> that should not say labs published. This is like how many... How many learners have actually taken one of my labs? Like, I think a lab developer would like to know that, right? How many labs do I have in development right now? Like, how long have I been doing this? Like, these statistics, I think, are cool for the lab developer. But this is the one I'm most excited about. 28 of your labs can be improved. Well, that's interesting. Like, you, you almost have to click the button, right? Like, and you come to this thing we're calling Lab Advisor. Lab Advisor is if you're an Azure person, there's an Azure has an advisor that's similar to this. It's kind of what gave us the idea, you know, a, a little while ago. But the idea is we've got tons of data about what people are doing in labs. We also have been building labs for a long, long time. I mean, we 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 launched 5.8 million labs just last year in 21. We're on pace to crush that. We know what makes a high quality lab. We know what we have all this data so why don't we put these together and help you so hey there's a lab that has a mac address conflict that's a severe problem like that's going to cause the user a real problem okay there's a there's an error your duration is exceeding the typical use completion rate whatever these things are but these are problems right and you have four labs affected on that one or seven on this one well wait a minute four i gotta fix that so i click it and now it says okay here's what a mac address conflict is here's how you fix it Here's all the labs that have that problem. And if you know, you can if we can resolve it, we'll have a link that we'll just go resolve it for you. If we can't, we'll help you do it. And then finally, there's this notion of okay, this, this is a best practice I really don't care about. I, I would say this one you probably should, but you can just click here and say, look, I don't don't put this in my face anymore or dismiss this altogether, right? And you can postpone or dismiss it so you don't have to see it. So I'm I'm pretty I'm, I'm not pretty excited. I am giddy as a schoolgirl about how. This is going to help uh, help our customers and you build better labs. I think that what's cool about it as well is not just is, is it a destination you need to go to once in a while, right? That would be cool enough. But James Burnham, who, who runs this team from a product management standpoint, he's like, well, wait a minute. We can give people notifications all over the place. So when you're in the lab series view, we're going to put give you a little, a little, hey, by the way, this this lab series could be improved. Even when you do a search, 
we're going to say, hey, look, you've got some recommendations here, some things that the data tells you. You could make an improvement if you want. You can improve that learner experience. Um, and then, of course, there's an admin view as well. So you can start um, editing these things and tailoring them yourself. So a perfect example of how we're taking data and we're taking best practices and we're doing some, some very intelligent things to prompt this. Now, in June, your folks are going to start seeing this. In June, which by the way, it's late May right now. So very end of June, you're going to start seeing this lab advisor starting to show up. Now at first, we're only going to be looking at maybe two or three things. We want to make sure to get the user experience right and, and we we're, we're want to make sure our, the data story is, is right on. But then what's going to happen is every single month, you're going to see more things added. We might add two or three one month. We might add 10 or 15 a different month. Right now we have a list of 48 different things that we are going to be measuring and monitoring and exposing to you to improve labs. 48, right? And I tell you what, almost every time I talk to a customer, they're like, hey, well, this is something that might be cool. And I'm like, you know what? That would be cool, you know? And we fit it somewhere into our priority. So again, super excited about Lab Advisor. I hope you are too. Um, the next thing. I'm talking about building higher quality labs. Well, high quality lab for us is one where the student gets in easily, knows what they're supposed to do, and when they're done, they feel a little more confidence because you know what? I own that now. I learned something. Like I, I now have a skill I didn't have before thanks to this lab. Like that's a high quality lab. And, and building those quickly is a thing. Because as you know, if you, if you have people building labs, it's not like everyone in your company can build labs. Like you've got, you've got limited resources. So the faster they can crank out a high quality lab, like the better. You know, so how much automation should we do? How much scoring should we do? Those are all things that impact the, the number of labs, the number of skills you can, you can apply labs to, right? So what we believe is, is we can do some things to make lab building more easy. Easy is the wrong word. To, 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 make, to make building a high quality lab more straightforward. And what we're gonna launch <clears throat> this also is in development. It's going to launch probably the end, probably around end of summer, and we'll, we'll every month kind of improve. It might be early fall, but it's called the instructions editor. And this is the idea. When you go in as a lab developer and you say, okay, I want to now edit instructions. Those of you that are that are lab developers, we call it IDLX right now, right? So IDLX is is all about our markdown, and it's it's something you have to learn. It's not hard, but it's 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 markdown. Right? It's kind of like an HTML -y kind of a kind of a feel, kind of like this. But this is going to have instructions that are with the instructions here, the WYSIWYG right there. If I edit over here, it you know they they kind of work together. Whether I edit here or there, it add, it updates real time. <clears throat> but what's really cool about this is this bottom panel, which by the way, you'll have the choice of of you want to put it, you know, kind of on the side, more like like VSC, Visual Studio Code, or do you kind of like it down the bottom? Your choice. But the deal is, when I look at a page, because what what we want is as as as, in, as instructors, right, and as learning departments, we also want consistency. We want standards, right? We want to have our labs, you know, look a certain way and have a certain feel to them, right? And and the way you can start doing this is by building page layouts or using ours. So you can choose a layout and say, okay, what do I want some assessment built in? Do I just want some images? Do I want, you know, what, what do I need here? Or you can create a new one, right? So you can use one of ours or not. And then once you use the layout, then you can start writing your steps. And then you're like, okay, you know what? I want to add an activity. And that activity could be an automated activity, like a scoring script. And if you add that, you'll have the script right there, right there. So you can edit it and, 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 and kind of keep it, keep it organized, right? matching numeric whatever it is if you happen to do like a multiple choice you just type in your question type it in and then add it like that's that'll it's that easy to just add some sort of a scoring activity in certain spots along the way right what's next is components oh my gosh there's another one of james burnham's ideas and, and james's idea was we have all these things that, that we can do but we don't expose them very easily right so why not put them right here so if you want to add a drop down box just click it right and here it is here's the components here's your options here's the values add it done right lots of different pre-packaged components that you can use similar thing a little bit different is snippets wait well, hey, you how many times do you have to say in a lab like log into the vm 
and this lab developer does it kind of one way, this other lab developer does it a different way. We'll just make a snippet and make it exactly what you want. You can edit it if you like, log into the VM, what's the link, like build your own snippets. So now you're enabling your lab developers to build much faster labs, more high quality labs, more consistent experiences, right? But they're doing it faster because they don't have to reinvent the wheel. They're just using the snippet, right? Now, as much as I love this, I think the part that I love the most is right there, is that the lab advisor is watching all the time. Even though I haven't even published this lab yet, it's saying, hey, you know what? You don't have any activities in this lab. So in other words, it, it, it could be higher quality if you add an activity, some validation, right? Um, there's just different, like, hey, you, you might have, you know, in some labs where you see that the, the instructions go like 17 pages long, like we'll give you a little thing. Hey, it might be a little content heavy. Maybe break that up into two steps, right? So we're helping lab developers build higher quality labs proactively is the idea. And so um, I'll tell you what I'd love to do. I would love to, um, I'm gonna go back to my deck for a minute, but I'd love to open up and have a little conversation. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And um, first of all, anyone, is there any good question in the queue that I have missed? Like, does someone wanna un unmute their mic and ask me something? Like, what, give me some feedback. What do you think so far? Raj had asked if Lab Advisor is a free source interface like other lab on demand monitoring tools, or if it's a charge based model. And James had shared with them that it is free. So, yeah, Raj, go. it is a lab advisor and instructions editor will just be part of the platform. Like, um, it's something that we believe. We believe that we believe so much in skilling and, and empowering you to build better, better lab experiences that we, 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 it's something we really want you guys to use and enjoy. Good question. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I, I am here. Um, Last thing I'll say is um, I just, I love working here. I love working with all of you. And I think that some of the things that you're doing, I'm, I'm seeing so many names that I recognize. Um, some of the things that you guys are doing are just incredible, right? And it's kind of humbling to even be a part of it. So um, I love our partnerships. I hope you do too. Um, you know, I guess this is another example of how we are skillable and so are you, <laughs> right? So um, I am done. Please do me a favor. Take a little break. Um, go grab a cup of coffee or a refresh on what you're drinking and um, choose the right session next time because our, our next it, it, this next session, because there's a lot of great stuff. If you liked what I had to say, there's some really good presenters coming after me that are that are going to be even better. So um, we thank you and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.